What's up, guys? Welcome back to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about going from farmer to flipper. Welcome to Real Estate Investing Secrets. We're all looking for freedom and the opportunity to live better, more fulfilling lives. But most of us were trained our entire lives to work for someone else and chase their dreams. How can we use real estate investing as a vehicle to achieve financial freedom? My life is dedicated to answering your real estate investing questions and helping you build an investing business that allows you to change your life and the world around you and to enable you to turn your dreams of financial freedom into a reality. My name is Mike Hambright from FlipNerd.com and your questions get answered here on the Real Estate Investing Secrets Show. Hey Brad, how are you doing today? Good, Dylan, how are you? Good, buddy. It's great to have you on the show. I started off with the headline from Farmer to Flipper. So those of you who uh, are not lucky enough yet to know Brad Bone and, and what his family does, I'm going to let him give us a quick minute intro on, on what he and his family does. Yeah, so so my family, is, are, are, we're, we're pistachio farmers. That's the main crop. We have other crops as well. But uh, my grandfather originally uh, bought a farm. We're out in the, in the Central Valley of California. And it used to be all cotton, you know, 25 years ago, mostly cotton and alfalfa. And over the past 25 years, a, a lot of pistachios have gone in. So, um, so anyway, I grew up doing that, um, did, did that from all through school, through high school, and then um, got into kind of went away from that industry. But I'm still very much involved. I live on the farm um, and we're, it's still part of our family. So. Yeah, so uh, a little secret some of you guys don't know, Brad is a member of Investor Fuel with myself and his brother, Justin, also, and we just have Brad with us today. But uh, he and his brother are very gracious and their whole family, and they send boxes and boxes of pistachios to our events every quarter and probably even in between, and uh, and everybody gets to enjoy them. So, Brad, from all the members of Investor Fuel, we appreciate the pistachios you guys uh, yeah bring for us and, and send to us. So, um, so this is, this show is called real estate investing secrets. And, and something that we get to do is we get to bring the listeners and watchers, basically the secrets uh, of, to the success from the different um, guests that we have on the show. So what I really want to start out with Brad is, um, is let's go back into when you decided to get into real estate investing and kind of your journey up until then. Yeah, so it was around 2014 when I when I got interested in it. Back then, I remember thinking the first thought I had was interest rates are really low. I don't want to miss the low interest rate. And then, of course, we all know they went even lower over the next you know six years. So, um, so so it was 2014. Uh, I just started researching a lot. I remember listening to a lot of bigger pockets podcasts. It was kind of when they started their podcast right around that time, and I was listening to them all the time. Um, and then eventually, um, I, I worked with a, kind of a cousin as doing kind of a little split with him. We bought a couple deals at the auction. They were, um, and then they ended up starting doing something else. So then my brother, my twin brother, Justin, we decided to start a business. We became 50, 50 partners and started, started, you know, trying to, to buy houses. Of course it went slow at the beginning. I think we bought our first house in like January of 2015 and that's a rental. And then the next one came in April and we bought a handful, I don't know, five or six that year and, you know, scratching a claw and trying to figure it out. So, yeah, I, th I think that's what we all do when we first get started. And sometimes even today, right. We're always looking for deals and trying to figure out what the next right path is for us. So yeah. our, our listeners and watchers, Brad, um, those who, who have been fans of Flip Nerd for a long time, some of them are newer in, in the real estate investing business. Some of them are old dogs like me. Um, and I think something that, that we can talk a lot about today that's really important because I think it's on the minds of a lot of investors, again, whether new or old, is, um, is partnerships and, and working with family. And you mentioned your brother, Justin, he's your twin brother, and you guys are, are partners in this business. So um, maybe you can share with us going into it, you know, what you guys thought about kind of in the middle and now today after your business is a bit more mature, how that looks with you guys together. Yeah, I remember being wondering whether we should really partner on, on this business. Part of it was I never been in business with my brother, but I remember quickly realizing, well, we're twins. We've always been partners. So this should be no different. 
And, and that's really how it's been. It's been great the whole time. I think a lot of it has to do with, we're, very, we're different in a lot of ways, as you know, but we have the same goals and we completely trust each other and there's never been an issue there. Um, so that's what makes it work. But, you know, a lot of it was like, well, let's like do this together. Let's like either either make it together or like go down in flames together. But I want to do it with 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 my brother. So um, the the one the thing that was a little different with our partnership is my brother is much more involved in the farm with my dad. And so he he couldn't spend full time, you know, in real estate. So we, we were at, so I, I do you know, I go full time. We're still 50 50 partners, but we we offset that with a salary difference. And that's that's really how we make it work. So I think that's that's one thing that can that people can get wrong with partnerships is you can be equal partners, but have but do vastly different amounts of work. And that's OK. You just you just offset it with with how you're compensated. And uh, really, I think you got to think about the partnership percentage as like the value you bring as a as an owner. And what each person brings as an owner. Don't think about it in terms of what, how much hours they're going to spend on the business because that can be that can be offset easily with with compensation. Sure. So, Brad, what would you say that the um, for for those people who are you know investors thinking about partnering right now, what do you think that the the biggest bonus is? And you know, take the fact out that it's Justin because he automatically wins since he's your twin. But what's the biggest bonus to having a partner versus going solo yeah it's so helpful to have someone to just bounce ideas off of and because i think we get in our head a lot especially in real estate and you you know it's a lonely business anyway and then if you're also solo you're even lonelier so um i remember there was different different opinions on partnerships even back when we were starting there always has been, but back then it was kind of like, some people were like, don't give away half your business. Why would you do that? Do it on your own. Here's how you do it. But the truth is, is like, there's, there's a lot more value that comes from a partner that has really nothing to do with money. Um, probably you're going to make more money if you get a right partner anyway, but it's just going to be more enjoyable. You're going to, you're going to avoid the pitfalls that you might otherwise hit. Um, but it's very important to get the right partner. I mean, that's huge. It can go wrong if you don't get that right. And, and I know that it's always been sunshine and rainbows with yourself and your partner who's your brother, but, um, but in reality, what, what challenges would you say to watch out for, or some of those pitfalls when you do partner for, for those of us who are thinking of partnering up right now? I think one, one thing is, um, like, I remember, you know, you go to a, to a, to a RIA event and sometimes I was always amazed to see this guy over here saying to this guy over there who he just met. Hey, let's partner. And like, no, no, don't, don't do that. You got to really know the person and your, your goals have to be the same. Like what if this guy wants rentals and this guy wants flips or this guy wants a wholesale and this guy doesn't, or they, they just think about money differently. And this guy's more risk averse or whatever. So you gotta have the same goals. And then I also think like another bad partnership arrangement would be, well, I'm the guy who's super into real estate and been researching it. This guy over here is good at contracting. That guy's got a high credit score so we can get money. That's a bad partnership too because you can hire contractors, you can you can you can get money like think about it in terms of like what do you bring as an owner? I think that's the most important part. Yeah. Yeah, so I think what I'm hearing you say is basically in real estate investing, there there's three or four puzzle pieces to each deal almost. Yeah. And it's like we try we really want to. And again, you know, you've been in the business for a while now. You want to bring different puzzle pieces to put that puzzle together. And sometimes they overlap, sometimes they're exactly the same, but there there's enough extra that that makes that puzzle whole. But I, I think you're exactly right. So I've been, you know, going to real estate investing events and running them since the early 2000s. And I'd see, and I'll blame it on guys, right? Because women are much smarter than us. But uh, I'd see guys like, wham, run off and get married after knowing each other 30 seconds. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, dudes, 
slow down. You don't even have an LLC. You don't even know anything about each other yet. Like, you know, I, I think it's really important that, that you have the same personal beliefs and, and I'm not talking about like down deep or like, you know, religion and politics. We don't talk about that stuff on the show, but um, you, you kind of have to be able to spend time with that person and probably not be irritated by them. And, and I've had a lot of partners throughout my years. I've had some 50, 50 partners going back probably over a decade ago now, and I'll, more than likely never have a 50 50 partner again in everything I do in business, because there's just so many, you know, different facets. Um, and I don't have a twin brother like you do either in the, in the business. Um, but having deal partners sometimes makes more sense. But like yeah, you said, I, yeah, no, you go ahead, please. No, I, I think like partnering on a deal on a flip deal is like that. That's easy. Those are simple partners they are in and out quick. And, and I, I actually, I think, the first step to partnering would be I'm going to form my own LLC and me and you can do deals together and, and they're quick in and out. There's no long-term thing there. And that's a lot less risky, but if me and you form a LLC and we don't know each other that well, now you're, you're much more married and that it's hard to, hard to figure that one out. Well, yeah. And like I I've, I've learned throughout the years, the debts that that LLC uh, incurs, you know, you're jointly and severally liable for debts for, for other things that happen. And uh, when you're 20, you don't care. We talked about that earlier today off camera, you know, and when, when we were 25 year old young studs, like we could work 800 hours a, a week and uh, you know, Brad's a farmer. So how, how much can he really work a lot more than I can, but now as, as you're getting on and be, becoming more mature in, in your uh, you know, in your life, You've got wife and kids and all that other stuff going on. It's like, hey, it's time to uh, it's time to set the business up the right way, and um, and making sure that you're aligned with the right people, I think, is very important. Which kind of brings me a little bit to my next question. We haven't talked about it a lot. You talked about Ria's. I talk about meetups, but how important has networking been to you and Justin uh, when building your business? Yeah, it's been very important. I feel like. Um... We're, I don't really think of myself as great at networking, especially before before we joined Investor Fuel. Uh, you know, kind of embarrassing. I don't feel like I knew that many people, many investors in, in in my own market. And then we joined Investor Fuel, and it opens you up to this huge network. That it's not instant. You still got to get to know people, but uh, that's that's been such a such a big thing. And and I think the longer you stay in it like the more things open up. Um, it, it, so yeah, it's been very, very, very helpful. Yeah. I don't network a ton in my market. I probably should more, but, um, but the, the network with investor fuel has been great. Yeah. And I think Brad, you know, I was one of the first guys you talked to, I think when, when you came to fuel and we walked to lunch together and we were in California, which is your home state. Most people know I'm from Detroit, which is like a state in its own. And uh, my my whole like timing was off. It was three hours. My plane was messed up. I'm like whining because I want to be back home and like doing my deals. And I'm out in California. And then I got to walk to lunch with this guy who is who is literally and I'm not kidding. And all the other investor fuel members, you guys can get mad at me, but he and his brother are the nicest guys in the ent entire mastermind. Um, so it was really cool to be able to, to meet you and, and to walk around like that. And, you know, you just get to know people. And I don't know if it um, if it's if if that's the reason why we were kind of, you know, I'm better buddies with you some than some of the other people or, you know, that there's just like that weird connection. And sometimes it's just a connection. Uh, but but networking is so important. So if you're a newer investor, even if you've been in the business a long time, you're not doing a lot of networking. I very much encourage you to network as much as possible. And, um, and you have to do business. So doing deals is more important than networking. But a lot of times networking can help you get into more deals, especially if you're not at the level that some of the guys that we were talking about are because you, you have to have connections. It's really hard to be a lone wolf in this business and be successful because like Brad said, it's really lonely. Sometimes you don't have a bunch of coworkers, to, you know, to sit around the water cooler and tell stories and not that we're the kind of people that really want to do that. But uh, you know, like today I worked by myself the whole day in the office. I made a few phone calls because I need some human interaction, but I didn't see anybody else for the most part. Okay. Today was my really my hard work day. Um, and, and I love these days. But then on the other hand, it's like you said, you know, when, when you start networking, you never know what comes out of it. So uh, I yeah, think that's. And, yeah. And I think I, uh, I didn't really understand what network networking was. I thought it was more like you're out there trying to sell yourself. 
And it's, it's just like getting to know people and saying, hey, what, what works in your market? Here's what works. And it's just being real and being a normal person. Uh, it's really not that complicated. It's getting to know people. And I think there's a ton of value that comes out of that. Yeah, it's you know what it is. It's it's bringing value, and and uh, you know I'm uh, I'm definitely guilty of giving more than I take, and that's just the way that I am. And I've been yelled at by a lot of my mentors, business mentors, personal mentors. Um, but it's part of what makes me tick and makes me feel good. So I I feel like I'm a good networker in some ways, but I, I could be a better one in others, learning to take more. But but in all in all serious note, this it's it's all about what you can give. And, yeah. uh, and when you get to your first few RIAs and meetups and you're looking for those mentors that you're talking about, and you may not be ready yet for coaching or to, to step into something like Investor Fuel, which we talk about it all the time, but really never explain it. It's a nationwide mastermind uh, founded by Mike Hambright, who's also the founder of FlipNerd. And um, it's, it's for investors who are doing 10 or 15 deals on up. And we get together on a quarterly basis and basically talk about what our struggles are and, and what's going on uh, in our business. It's not really to um, to brag about how many deals we're doing. It's more like saying, uh, you know, Brad could come to me and say, man, I'm having trouble with my general contractors right now in my rehabs. Like, how do you keep those guys excited? And I'm like, well, here's what I've learned, right? Um, and that's really what the, the mastermind principle is about. So if, if you're a listener or watcher and you ever think that you might be the right fit for something like that, there's always links below. You can check it out. But, um, but, but Brad, let's, let's move away from networking, which is what we're doing right now and what we love to do. And I want to know a little bit about, let's talk about the central Valley, uh, where you guys actually invest and what you're doing today, like right now in, in, in the middle of the year, what do you guys, what, what's going on in your investing world? Yeah. So, so we're actually in two markets. We're in, we're in the central Valley, California, and then Jacksonville, Florida. Um, more of our stuff is in Jacksonville, but we do have some stuff kind of between Bakersfield and Fresno. And right now we're, um, we're, we're kind of at the point where we've got, we've got flips that we're selling. Um, it just kind of, that's the cycle that we, our business is in right now. It's, it seems like that's what happens. You, you sort of go through these cycles. And so we're, we got a whole bunch for sale. Um, and we're, we're, we're switching more to quicker flips, like, like not really taking on the rehabs. Um, we don't wholesale a lot. We do some, but we tend to a lot of times just close, trash them out, put them on the market. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're finding deeper deals right now, which is good. I think the market's allowing for that. So, uh, so that's helping. Yeah. So Brad, when you say deeper deals, can you, can you break that down for us? What, what does that exactly mean? Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's, there's a couple deals right now that are probably 80 to 90,000 in profit that are, that are coming. Um, and, and you know, that's, that's a rare thing. That doesn't happen that much. We're getting, we got a couple of them right now. I don't know that that's necessarily because of the market or that we just kind of struck a, you know, a lucky, a lucky streak, but, um, but we are trying in this market to to make to make lower offers, starting off lower, um, just because I think there's an opportunity to do that. So. Yeah, and you know the old adage is the harder you work, the luckier you get, right? So once in a while we get those home runs. Um, so can you can you break down a little bit for us? And maybe they're not closed yet, so I'm going to find some wood and knock on it for you. But how um, how did you guys find those deals? Yeah, so. Um, right now, probably the, the lead source that's working the best is TV. Um, TV has been working. We're also, we're also some of the referral based, um, companies that, that basically, so there's no cost to marketing. It's just, you pay once you close. Some of those are working. Um, um, and then we're, we're, we're also doing direct mail. We're getting, getting some through direct mail through invest machine. Uh, doing a little bit of cold calling still not doing texting anymore. Um, so, but I would say TV seems to, I, I really like the TV channel because especially, especially the, the branding that can come right now in this market as people might start to pull out. So, so let's dive deeper into that, Brad, because, um, let's, let's talk about this. So you're younger than me, better looking, uh, probably more successful. You definitely have better, oh. um, you, you have, you have better, uh, pistachios available, uh, you know, on call than I do. All right. I'll give you that. <laughs> but, but, you know, us growing up, uh, kind of in the, in, in the same, you know, in the same time, basically, 
when we saw people on TV or if we saw companies uh, advertising on TV, we probably thought, you know, wow. And even still today, like that's a big deal. Right. So when you think back to, to Brad, when he was 10, you know, Brad and Justin, like I was joking today, he had him in a headlock and Justin may be the tough one. He might have, have you in a, in a headlock, you know, um, yeah. back, back when you guys were 10, but, but fast forwarding to today. So, so what did that look like and how did it feel? I, I know you guys went and shot the, you know, the commercial somewhere in a studio, but, but what's happening when those, when those commercials are, are hitting the TV? Yeah, so, so it's a 30-second commercial, and we're running them in Jacksonville. Um, we're not running them out here in California for a reason. <laughs> I, like, I was nervous. I didn't want to be on TV, um, but I figured, okay, if, if I'm in a market that I don't know anybody in, uh, that, that works. Um, but, yeah, it, it's basically Justin and I standing there talking about our business and for 30 seconds, you know, going through the, the different things, the different ways that we help. And we, we do, we do mention that we're twins. I think that's unique. That's a little bit of a unique marketing thing that we can use. Um, we don't say anything about pistachios because Florida doesn't even, they don't, they don't, they don't even know that they, they don't need, they don't need pistachios in Florida. I'm, I'm right. from, you know, kind of the East coast. So we all go to Florida, right? Michigan, Ohio, yeah. New York in the winter. And um, yeah, they don't have pistachios there. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good commercial. I, I, I remember going out of the studio thinking, oh man, that was horrible. And then you pull it up and it's like, it's not that bad. Um, so we ran with it, but it's amazing. I think it does. It definitely is working. And so you're obviously not doing acquisitions um, in Jacksonville no. because you, you, you don't do virtual wholesaling, right? So you guys have a boots on the ground, I'm assuming acquisition no, manager we there. A, we have a virtual buyer. Oh, so awesome. So, so you're doing virtual. Yeah. So, so let's, let's break that down again for, for the listeners and yeah. watchers. So you guys don't have boots on the ground in Jacksonville. Somehow you're hiring somebody to take pictures or whatever. We yeah. can figure that part out later. So you have someone who's buying in Jacksonville um, and they're in a different state or in a different country or whatever. Uh, yeah. But you're advertising to Jacksonville from California with TV, TV commercials. Yes. So what does, um, what does your acquisitions person, the person who's who's talking to the sellers once they see that commercial, we'll just stick with the TV. How ha, are you able to, it's not you, so you probably don't dig in super hard, you know, but has he or she been able to tell you that, you know, this lady saw you on TV. She said you guys were twins. Like, have you gotten any of that feedback yet? Yeah, yeah, we, we have gotten some of that. Um, and so people do sometimes want to talk to me or Justin, um, which, you know, they just say that hey they're not available so they're just they're just california goes. models that we hired to do the commercial <laughs> yeah so so they they're able to pivot off of that but yeah, yeah so our, our acquisition guy lives in actually in california and he he buys for us in florida and also in california we just we use different number phone numbers um and he's able to do it that way but yeah we, we definitely do get people that are are responding positively to that commercial that, that's cool. So I don't want to get off the TV thing. And I'm sure you guys have a, um, a link on YouTube to that commercial. So I'll yes. get that from you later. We'll have it in the show notes. You guys can check this out who, you know, those of you who, who didn't know that like people are, were got normal guys like us are, are just doing commercials to buy houses. So we'll get that in the show notes. That'll be cool. Yep. Um, and I, I guess let's talk about virtual. We got, we still have a little bit of time. So let's talk about how, how someone virtually buys houses basically on the phone, email, text, Zoom from someone in another state without being able to see it. That's a really a foreign concept for some people. Yeah, it's um, when, when you when you get that system dialed, it's like you, it opens up your world. And that's what's great about it. So what we do is um, so we've got a virtual. So phone calls come in, they go through a lead, a lead intake person they qualify the lead as to whether this person really has motivation that gets pushed to, um, to our acquisitions person. And then that acquisitions person is, is negotiating the deal over the phone and, and trying to come to an agreement on price. Once that agreement is reached, then a DocuSign contract goes out. We still haven't seen the house yet. So DocuSign contract goes out and it's, it's, it's usually a 30 day uh, contract and we've got an inspection period in there. So it gets, you know, assuming it gets signed, it comes back. Now we're under contract. And so the very first thing we do is our TC 
orders an inspection with a guy that we used kind of a third party inspector. He's not actually a licensed inspector, but he goes through, fills out a little inspection report and takes a bunch of pictures, uploads it to Google Drive. And once those pictures hit Google Drive, we do a deal review. And uh, basically that's us all getting on a Zoom call and deciding, okay, is this, is this what we thought it was? Do we need to negotiate price down? Or are we ready to go forward? Do we want to wholesale this? Do we want to flip it? What do we want to do with it? This is all kind of Jerry Green's uh, process that that um, he, we learned from him. Um, and he, he does it virtually in his own city. And we do the same thing. We do the same process in, in California. Sure. We'll have a link to Jerry's stuff below. Jerry's an Investor Fuel member, been in the business a lot longer than me. Thank God, right? He's been in the business a long time. He yeah. has um, recently, and I know that you know this, he's acquired the, realist, um, the REI Sales Academy from John Martinez, who was pretty much known as the best real estate investing sales trainer, I guess, to date. I've been in the business a long time. He's the best I've ever seen, best I've ever known. He and Jerry are very similar in the way that they train. Uh, they kind of combine forces. Jerry took over all the training. So uh, we're going to see a lot of great things coming from Jerry in the REI Sales Academy, I believe, you know, in the, in the just next few coming months. Um, so we'll have some links to that below. But um, so, so, Brad, I think the magic uh, is in your your sales guy right like he's a sale you know i'm you know that i'm a sales guy we've talked about this i've actually helped you guys do a little bit of sales training with your old acquisitions guy yeah. um and um the the magic is in having that person and there's a whole bunch of other things that go with it so how did you guys find a salesperson who's really a buyer so it's confusing to some people who are listening or watching right. They're like wait a minute he's a salesman i thought he buys so he's buying homes right he's buying properties let's say uh He's never seen them before. He'll probably never see them. I don't know if he was in the real estate business, if, if he was, you know, a, a phone guy. Like, how did you find him? How did you train him? And and um, I don't know, like, just tell yeah. us a little bit of that magic. So we were, uh, let's see, about a year ago, we were in need of a of a salesperson, another salesperson. We, we had someone that was that was doing it already, but we needed a second one. And I, I think I put out an, an ad to, um, we put out an ad to Wise Hire and we got someone who responded who was way overqualified. He was actually looking, he, he came from a big company up in Fresno and he was, uh, you know, he was actually a sales trainer level kind of person and we, he was too qualified for us. So we, I talked to him and he said, hey, I know another guy who may, just might really fit. And it did. So we went and did an interview with him. So he can't, he, he's got a lot of experience. He's in his fifties. He's bought houses for a long time. So he knows the game. Um, and we just rolled him right in, kind of taught him a little bit of kind of our process. He'd never bought out of state. So, um, and you know, that's a little bit of a hurdle to get over. Just like start looking at comps and start understanding the market. And if you're wrong, that's okay. We're going to do a deal review when we're all going to look at it. And if we're wrong, we can, we can deal with that. So, um, so that's how it worked. Yeah. And it's worked good. He's, he's been with us almost a year. Yeah. It, it definitely saves a ton of time. And, um, I haven't sat down with a seller in a long time either. Uh, most of the stuff I do is virtual, even in town because it's just so tough nowadays. And, uh, I, I guess, depending on, on the size of the deal, sometimes you have to show up, you know, if there's a giant profit involved. Um, but it's definitely, it definitely was a foreign concept, even, probably six or seven years ago. I think the last five years it's become uh, more, more prevalent, you know, buying without actually seeing, but yep. 10 years ago, it was crazy when I would buy properties and okay. uh, it was that dad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The guest star, Mr. Bone. My so, daughter out. <laughs> so um, man, it, I tell you what, if it wasn't for the grandparents, we, I don't know where this world would be. That's a whole nother discussion, but um but going back to that, you know, it was it was a very foreign concept 10 years ago. I would buy properties. I couldn't see the inside of them. They were auction properties. You know, we, we all know the stories. And then you kind of crack that door open and go, holy cow, what did I spend 100000 or $200,000 on? And that's the yeah. risk that we would take. And today, you know, um, it, it's different in every area. You know, Florida has their swamplands or whatever, right? We have basements up up in the, you know, Midwest and, and East Coast that are always having problems. You guys have, I don't know, fault lines underneath your subdivisions or whatever happens out in California. But you just yeah. figure out a way through it. And, um, and the speed uh, changes everything. 
you know, and, and I think people are more used to it now. And even after the pandemic, uh, normal people are used to using Zoom and doing more things uh, virtually again or over the phone. So it's definitely something if you're a newer investor um, or if you're afraid to try it, don't be afraid. Just give it a shot. And uh, you have to learn your value zone. You And like, you know, you're 50 year old guy, like I'm getting there, right? I'm almost 50 in a few years. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to be that guy. But those are the kind of guys who are used to working the phone. I can be on the phone for three hours on a sales call if it means that 80 or $90,000 back end that we just talked about, you know? Um, so that's, that's awesome because it's a skill that uh, you can always sharpen, but it's very hard to teach that skill. And again, that's where, when you guys trained with Jerry green, he helped you guys sharpen your skills and something that uh, I'm sure your, your um, acquisitions manager is always working on. Even if we don't know, he's probably in the car right now, you know, working on his skills because that's what we do. Right. Yeah. Always, always practicing to get better. So, um, so as we're coming, you know, kind of cl closer to the end of the show here, I want to know, like, do you guys have, do you guys have anything special on your three year horizon? As far as real estate investing goes, do you guys have any, any different plans or big plans? I, one thing we're, we're talking a lot about now is, is getting into multifamily. Um, we actually, I think you've met him. Um, we brought on, um, uh, Kind of an operations guy last year, Brendan, and mm -hmm. he's he's down to Investor Fuel. But his background is multifamily. I mean, he's a he's a multifamily broker uh, for he's been in the business for like 16 years, so a long time. And he's my age, so he was doing it when he, you know, right out of high school kind of thing. Um, well, maybe a little bit after that, but anyway, I'm not quite that young. <laughs> um, Brad's anyway, almost 30. He's almost 30, folks. He's actually he's actually well, he's my age. I think he's like late thirties. Almost yeah. 40. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and he has been pushing this thing of, of like, let's get into multifamily. Let's, let's, you know, get onto that. And we've always stayed away from it. So I think that's something that will within three years, we'll be, we'll be into that. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, a lot of investors, you know, we graduate from the beginnings of the beginnings and then all of a sudden kind of figure out everything and, uh, once you get to a certain point, it's like, if you can do this, uh, you know, it's, it's like the, the new investors are afraid to leap over like the hundred thousand dollar hurdle or whatever it is, where, wh whatever your market is next thing, you know, the big guys are doing $500,000 rehabs or whatever. And, and next up, it kind of is multifamily, you know, it, it's the progression that, that I think I've seen a lot of investors, successful investors take over the last 20 years. So Brad, what is the absolute number one best piece of advice that you can give to a new real estate investor? Um, I think it's, uh, it's kind of, if, if you're, if you're brand new trying to get into it, just, just push past your fear of it and, and, and try and get that first deal under your belt. And the second one comes a lot easier than the first one. And the third one comes a little bit easier. So, and, and the, the second year is a lot easier than the first year. Um, so there, there is definitely a mountain that has to be climbed, but you gotta, you gotta take it a step at a time and, and it gets easier as you go. And I think it's even the same can be said for, for, you know, multifamily. It's like, once you got a bunch of real estate experience, the first multifamily deal is not quite as hard as it seemed like it was in the past. It's going to be hard. Um, but it's not, it's doable. It, it becomes doable. So you get, you got to just start going down that path and, and be smart and make it work. So there, a lot of it's just our mindset, you know, so much of it is our mindset. Yeah. I think, um, some people talk a lot about mindset. Some people, you know, don't bring it up at all. I, I'm a big mindset guy, but I, I've, I believe I've trained myself well enough after all these years that I don't think about mindset too much. I never get down in the dumps. Uh, I try not to anyways, hardly ever. And I would never let anybody see me there. Um, even if they're just people I do business with, uh, let alone my contractors or employees or whatever. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's having that belief in yourself. And, um, and that comes from your surroundings that comes from paying attention to shows like this and learning from guys like Brad or getting out there and networking and seeing that other people can do it. I think uh, the proof is in the pudding a lot of times. And um, I don't know about that for the 20 year olds, but for us guys who are a little bit older, when you saw people who were achieving greatness, whether it is in real estate investing or, or sports or, or anywhere, you're like, 
man, if that guy can do it, I can do it. So I think you have to wake up with that attitude every day. So that's, that's great advice. And um, as we're coming to a close, Brad, if people want to get a hold of you, or if they want to kind of watch what you guys are doing, um, is, is there a best way for them to do that? Yeah, they can catch us on, on, on Facebook. Um, find me on Facebook, Brad Bone. And our business is Prime Buyers. Probably look us up through that as well or through Google. Um, but yeah, I think my, I think my phone number and email are all on, on Facebook. So you can, you can find me pretty easily there. Perfect. Like I always say, these guys are offering free coaching. So find their phone numbers and call them. Yeah. I'm joking, of course, yeah. but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have links to, to all of Brad's social media below. And if you guys have, uh, you know, want to, want to share it or, or tell them thanks for, for a great show, then please do so. And, and if you guys have any deals in the Jacksonville area or central Valley and Brad will probably say, listen, if there's a deal anywhere, we'll take a look. So make sure to send them their way because these guys are, are awesome guys. Very trustworthy. Like I said, the nicest guys uh, that I've probably met in a long time. So make sure you take a look and, uh, and watch what they're doing and learn from them. And if this is your first time watching the show, or even if you've been a long time viewer or listener, make sure that you're subscribed on iTunes or Spotify, YouTube, wherever you can watch and listen. And if you haven't yet, make sure that you give us a, a lovely five-star review because that's what helps our show grow. And remember, we take all the notes so that you don't have to. So if you just go to flipnerd.com, you'll be able to watch all the previous episodes. If there was something Brad said or I said, you can scroll down. We've got all of the transcripts so you can follow along exactly with what you missed. So for Brad Bone, for Flip Nerd, I'm Dylan Tanaka, your favorite real estate investor from Metro Detroit. And we will see you guys on the next show. Thanks for listening to today's show. There are three ways I can help you start or grow your real estate investing business. If you're a new investor and just getting started, the Flip Nerd Investor Coaching Program is the most effective program in America. I've been coaching and mentoring new real estate investors for 10 years, and my students have literally purchased thousands and thousands of properties. Many of them started with little to no experience at all. Our program is a paint by numbers program where we tell you exactly what to do week by week to make sure that you don't get distracted on your way to results. We show you how to build a real business, not just create another job for yourself. New memberships are limited. You can learn more and apply or schedule a call with me and my team at flipnerd.com slash coaching. If you're an experienced investor doing a minimum of 10 deals a year, up to 500 deals a year or more, or have a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio already, you should check out our powerful Investor Fuel Real Estate Investor Mastermind. Over 100 of the nation's leading real estate investors are members, and it's not uncommon for our members to 2 to 5x their business just from getting around other members at Investor Fuel. At Investor Fuel, each of us are business advisors to one another's businesses, but we don't stop at business. We focus heavily on becoming better people and living fuller lives. If you're looking for fuel for your business or fuel for your life, please check out InvestorFuel.com. Applications and interviews are required as most investors are not a fit for our community. Please learn more at InvestorFuel.com. If you're not ready for coaching or masterminds, but eager to start learning more about investing, please join our private Facebook group by visiting flipnerd.com slash Facebook. New members get access to free training from us right here at flipnerd.com. And it's a community to safely ask your questions. A great place to get started. Simply go to flipnerd.com slash Facebook to request your access today.